Today is the second Sunday before Lent, so Lent's not so far away. And simply uh, today, Sunday next before Lent as we call it, and then we arrive at Ash Wednesday and off we go on our Lenten journey. It's rather good that on the second Sunday before Lent we have a very powerful theme of healing. Christ as healer. That's, that's a great thing to reflect on um, as we um, approach Lent. Integral part of our Lord's ministry. We touch on healing time and time again in the Gospels, most particularly in Luke's Gospel, of course, Luke the physician. But in year B, we are very much in Mark's Gospel. And with Mark, as we know, uh, he likes to get a move on. This was almost certainly the first gospel written, most scholars accept that. Um, and we're straight into the action in Mark's gospel. Into John the Baptist, start of our Lord's ministry, uh, and so on. So, so in Luke's gospel, have uh, the great sort of nativity story, have quite a long run in to our Lord's ministry, say, from um, about the age of 30. Um, Mark, we are, we are straight into the business. And um, with Mark's Gospel for this Sunday, we're in chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. Um, and we have our Lord um, healing. Um, Simon's mother-in-law um, is, is where we start with. As we think about this theme of healing, I've been reflecting, probably like many people, on last Wednesday, or the day before, um, when we're looking at the life of Captain Tom, Captain Sir Tom Moore. Most people simply refer to him as Captain Tom. Um, left us uh, last week. He caught COVID, but he was a man um, who had entered his second century, um, done extraordinarily well, um, a good and long and fruitful life. And one of the amazing things, of course, is uh, this man who survived uh, India and Burma in the Second World War, um, and reached the rank uh, of captain. He didn't really really come to fruition. In other words, his immense effect on people um, didn't actually arrive to the age of 99. 99, it's amazing. Um, and he wanted, uh, as you well know, to respond to the plight of the NHFs, the, the um, immense strain on our wonderful health service. So what can I can do? Started doing a few laps around the garden, about 82 feet, I think and thought he may raise a thousand quid. Well, uh, again, as you all know, he raised almost 33 million pounds, phenomenal, throwing gift aid, and it's actually about 39 million pounds for NHS charities. Uh, an, an extraordinary achievement. So when he died last week, um, the response was maybe as you might have expected. Um, uh, major institutions such as the Houses of Parliament, well, they had a minute's silence to mark his death. Um, flag flying a half mast at 10 Downing Street. Last Wednesday at six o'clock, I was ringing the bell in St Michael's where there was a national clap um, to mark his passing. Um, an extraordinary response. As well as amazing a monumental amount of money, he did much more as well. Um, he became a focal point, and indeed still is you might say, um, but a focal point um, in uh, pretty dark days when the, the vaccine wasn't in sight. Of course we've now passed the 10 million mark of people being vaccinated. So not much light at the end of the tunnel, um, and he gave the nation hope, as some people have said, um, which is a, 
a wonderful gift, the gift of hope. So in that instance, I'd like to argue that Tom was a healer. He was a healer for the nation. I also think something else about Tom, for what it's worth, I'll just throw this in, that possibly he represented British values, which maybe we used to have. And in our current climate in 2021, there isn't too much evidence of the sort of qualities that Tom embodies. Uh, so uh, um, a program which is uh, very popular uh, at the time was Foyle's War, middle of the 20th century, uh, down on the Kent coast there, Hastings. Um, that era and Foyle's War, Foyle, the, the sort of person he was, the sort of person Tom was, this, this army veteran, um, the understatement, self-deprecating, modest, humble, not looking for glory, not looking for financial reward, and so on and so forth. And maybe all rather different to the society which we now find ourselves living in. Um, and this, I think there's a sense of looking at Tom and a, and a hankering back uh, to that past and the sort of values which we were, might have once said were archetypal British values and possibly wanting to claw back uh, a little bit of that. So as we look at Tom, reflect on his life, I think there are various, various layers here. But certainly Tom as a healer, a healer for the nation, is a good one to go at. So I want to suggest today that with this wonderful theme running through scripture, and certainly in our lectionary today, in the first chapter of Mark, as Christ as healer, a living example of somebody who is also a healer, how we might emulate this in our own lives. Of course, one of the great things about Tom was I mean, he was not a powerful person. In other words, he wasn't in a position of authority. He was an elderly man, a rather vulnerable elderly man. Um, and yet he managed to bring a healing bar. And maybe for us, in our position, we might want to ask how, we, how are we able to bring healing to our family, our friends, people we know, to our, to our community? How are we able to contribute um, in that way? Most of us don't have medical backgrounds. Um, we don't necessarily um, lead public worship of, of a sort of healing ministry context. Um, you may be asking, well, how do, I, how do I bring about healing? A statistic which has certainly been food for thought for me during this pandemic has been to do with mental health in the UK. And I shared this before. Pre-COVID, with mental health, and slash depression, probably about 10% of the nation. It's quite high. But when we look at the middle of this pandemic, so in the middle, um, end of this year, maybe hopefully we will be out of the worst of it at least, um, that's doubled. So that's gone to 20% of people with pretty serious mental health issues. Um, we are associated with depression. Depression is almost a generic term, really, um, and obviously different grades of it. Um, but that's a huge statistic. One in five of us in our islands uh, suffering in this way. And maybe, maybe now that's a low figure. That's a low estimate. Maybe it's even higher. But say at least one in five of us. I think. Our contribution as healers may be um, along these lines, that we possibly might be able to help people who are not necessarily clinically depressed, which is a very specific term, which about like chemical imbalance and requires medication and so on. But um, 
in a more moderate form of um, feeling the blues, as it were, um, very down, lethargic and so on, lacking energy, demoralised, how possibly we might be able to make a contribution there. Last night I was doing a, a webinar, um, so looking at the computer, it was a seminar uh, um, being taught uh, actually about uh, um, using Zoom, um, WhatsApp, using groups and so on. This was through RDA, Ryan for Disabled. Um, and one of the things which the person leading the seminar was saying is how important it is to be upbeat, uh, to be positive. So working with volunteers, RDA is absolutely dependent on volunteers, uh, working with people, um, putting across really positive energy. And I think that is important. Uh, we all know it. And when we're trying to help people who maybe are demoralised, who are feeling down, to bring some of that light, some of that hope, some of that positive energy. When I think of Captain Tom, uh, the image I have is a man sitting down with his thumbs up um, and saying, we will get through this and saying in our nation, it may take a time, but we win in the end. We do get through to the end. Um, and it's, it's that sort of attitude, that sort of positive approach, which I think can bring healing bar in our own small way, in our own backyard we can be healers. So we give thanks for our Lord's extraordinary healing ministry, which he commissioned to the apostles to take that forward. So the church has a healing ministry. Give thanks for Captain Tom, for his life, for, for his healing, for our nation, moment of need, lifting our spirits. And what we might do as healers, as Christian people, um, helping people who are maybe particularly struggling at this moment in time during lockdown. And the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.